Hello everyone, welcome back to my channel. Today I am filming a long-awaited video that I've wanted to make for a long time, so I'm really happy I'm making it today. It's a video all about how to make your illustration portfolio. How I'm going to organise this video is first of all talking about what to include in your portfolio, different things that an art director might be looking for, and then I'm going to talk about the format your portfolio might come in. So what I think about portfolio platforms like Behance and whether I think it's important to have a standalone website and also discussing physical portfolios and whether you do in fact need one. So let's get into it. My first piece of advice is one that I go on about a lot on my channel. I am a huge believer in commissioning yourself. I say this a lot, that you should make the work that you want to be hired for. I think it's more than okay to include that kind of work in your portfolio. You shouldn't feel ashamed if you haven't been commissioned by a client yet. It's a really good way of building up your portfolio. There are many different ways you can commission yourself. You can read an article in a magazine and decide you want to illustrate it. You could redesign a book cover, you could illustrate the characters from one of your favourite books, you could design some packaging, just anything you're interested in and anything that you would like to be hired for in the future. It can really help and be an amazing learning experience to commission yourself. Something really important that I see a lot of new illustrators not doing, because I am sent portfolios every now and again, I think it's really important to only include your best work, and that might mean that less is more. Leading on from that, I would say be really honest with yourself and look at the work you've included in your portfolio and if there's something that you're not sure whether you should include that might be a good indication that you shouldn't include it. There's a saying that your portfolio is only as strong as your weakest piece. If you include pieces of work that you're not quite sure about, you're not quite happy with, this could also be apparent to other people that are looking at your portfolio. It might just be very obvious to an art director that this piece of work isn't as strong. They might be concerned about hiring you in case you produce work of that standard. So yeah, only include your very best pieces of work. My next tip might be one you disagree with, but I would say be consistent and only include one illustration style in your portfolio. My thought behind that is art directors are insanely busy and when they come to your portfolio, they want to know what they will get if they hire you. And if you have multiple styles going on, they might be unsure as to what you will produce if they commission you. It's much more beneficial to focus in on one style and really hone that style, make it amazing, make it the best you possibly can and be known for that style, then art directors are more likely to remember. If you have numerous styles going on in your portfolio, they won't know what to contact you for in future. They won't be able to remember what it is that you're really specialised in. Although it's important to be consistent in your portfolio, I would also say it's really important to vary your subject matter. You need to be able to show you have skills in different areas that you might be commissioned for. If you look at my website for example, I'm not saying that mine is the best portfolio site out there, it's definitely not, but I've made a real effort to include um, a wide variety of subject matters. So I have head and shoulder portraits, I have full body portraits, I have moving figures, animals, food, objects. I think I have places, I might not have places. I tried just to show the breadth of my skills within my style. And if you can show that too, that's really great because it just gives you more opportunities to get hired. They might be looking for food illustrations one time and then portraiture the next. So if you can show that you are really skilled at both, you're more likely to be hired. My last tip when it comes to setting up your portfolio is to really get to know your style and what you're trying to be known for and also what sets you apart from other illustrators and really make that apparent and celebrated in your portfolio. So that might just be your style. If you think you have a really individual style um, that is different from other illustrators that are currently working in this field, make sure you really celebrate that and you show the breadth of subject matter that your style can work with. It 
It could also be something as small as the way you include light in your work. Is that an area that is really strong? It could also be your perspective. Do you show scenes or action shots in a really interesting perspective that would work really well in editorial, for example? If you use really interesting techniques, make sure that that's the first thing that is apparent when you go on your portfolio. There's loads of different ways that your work can be unique from other illustrators. So find that and really celebrate that and give the art director a real reason to hire you over everyone else. So now I'm going to talk about the format of your portfolio and how you want to go about making one. My first tip would be to buy a domain. Um, I think it's such a small little detail, but it's something that just shows that you're professional and you take this seriously. If you can link to a proper domain name with your business name, your artist name, without blogspot.com or something on the end. Next, you want to choose your website service. I would really recommend building a standalone website rather than using other portfolio sites like Behance. I think they can be a great addition to your portfolio and another way of sharing your work. But having a standalone website is another way of showing that you're really serious about what you do. Having somewhere to direct people to that is really professional and easy to look around as well. So choosing your website service provider. I have gone with Cargo Collective and I will leave them linked in the description. I believe they are a site that a lot of people use to make their websites. A lot of people in the illustration world anyway. The positives of them are that they're really not expensive to start using. They're pretty simple to use and they're also pretty basic, which I think is good. Unless you are trying to get work in web design or something, if you are just wanting to be a straight up illustrator commissioned for editorial, advertising, publishing, you don't have to have a fancy website. You just need one that works really well and shows your work off in a really easy to navigate kind of way. So leading on from that, my next tip would be to choose a website service provider that allows you to easily update and revise your portfolio. I don't update my website very much, maybe once or twice a year, but I, every time I do, I really appreciate the fact that it's so easy to remember how to do it all. I don't have to go back and look at the instructions or anything like that. It's very simple and easy to use. When you're really busy trying to keep on top of all your marketing, it's just such a help to have something that's really easy to use and you can quickly update. So a massive tip for building your website is to make sure that it's really user friendly because art directors are insanely busy and I've read many times on blogs and in interviews that nothing irritates them more than a website that's really hard to get around and they usually very quickly click off it if they can't find what they're looking for or if it's too difficult to navigate. Ways that you can make it annoying for art directors or visitors to your site would be to have really large files uploaded to your website that take a long time to load so if you have a picture that is loading very slowly down that's going to get frustrating if they're trying to see quickly what your talents are and what you can offer them. And a good way to test whether your site is easier to navigate is to ask a friend or a family member to have a quick look around your site see if they can find everything easily Leading on from that, my next point is to make sure there's really easy to find contact details You'd think this is pretty straightforward, but I have been on other Illustrator sites and sometimes it's really difficult to find how I can follow them on social media or how I can get in contact with them via email. So just make sure that that is really apparent because that's really important. It can be the difference between you being contacted about work or not. My final tip is to organize projects in a way that makes sense and it's consistent throughout your site. So for me, I've mostly organized by project. So if I have a new client project, I will upload that as a separate part of my website. You could also group by subject matter or you could organize by skill. So if you want to show how you can work with product design, that could be a category. Then you could also have logo design, book covers, just make it really easy for the visitor to see. So that's everything I'm going to talk about in this video. 
Uh, one last thing to say though is about physical portfolios and whether I think they're important or not. From personal experience, and I've been an illustrator full time for a, quite a while now, I would say that you really don't need a physical portfolio. In the five plus years I've been illustrating full time, I have shown my portfolio in physical form once and that was when I was joining an illustration agency so it wasn't even to get client work. Any other time that I've been to meet with clients and that doesn't often happen I mostly just talk to clients via email or phone. When I've met clients in person we've just discussed my website and we've gone through images there or I've shown images on my laptop. We've never once taken a look at physical pieces of work. I would say focus mostly on a website portfolio. So I really hope that you found this video helpful. Let me know if you have any questions in the comments. I will leave everything that I've talked about linked. So Cargo Collective will be linked um, and my own website will be linked if you want to have a look at it. Again, it's not the best website ever, but it does mean that I get a commission. It's serving me well. Thanks so much for watching. If you're new here, please subscribe because I make twice weekly videos at the moment about life as an illustrator. And yeah, I will see you again very soon for another video. Bye. <laughs>